Hey, hey, it's it's Monday. Life's gonna suck. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying. Hey, good mor uh, good morning. Really? No, fuck you. Yeah. Talk to oh, the thing. <laughs> oh my god, what what is with that? It really it, dude. Like, and and it and what what a whatever. It's 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 Monday. Let's do this thing already. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. More on them in a bit. You know what's bad is that that wasn't even me trying to like stall for time. That's literally me trying to get my damn thoughts together because... It's kind of thrown off by you. I was I was gonna start off trying to uh, like oversell faking the funk, if you if you will, and get into <laughs> things like normal. But when you were just like, dude, it's fucking Mon Monday. I'm like, fuck, it is. And it, yeah, it was it was a, a interesting weekend that really was like one of the longest weekends, uh, like drawn out feeling that uh, I can't remember. Like I'm so used to, to them just flying by. And having to get, you know, right back into welcome to the daily cog. I, I love it. Uh, but, you know, that that cycle just this weekend se seemed dragged out a, a bit. Maybe it was the slow new news. Maybe it was some of the stupid was, news. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. There was some really stupid shit that ha happened this weekend across uh, across the genre verse, if you, if you will. Um, which, if you're joining us for the fir first time, thank you guys. Please hit the subscribe or follow button on you YouTube or your uh, podcast app, however you're listening or watching us. Um, we really pre appreciate that. I'm Kyle, and that's Manny. There. Um, I'm so used to it. Dude, this... LR, LR Mornings started in uh, May of 2019. So this daily show now is, you know, over two year, years old. And I, I'm so used to just doing it. I don't even do, like, the introduction of my, myself or, or you. Um, like, pe people should know how to read the YouTube, YouTube screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, man, uh, did you do anything fun or see anything new this week? Did you watch... Uh, I know you showed your girl girlfriend Ghostbusters, which she hadn't seen, and then you guys Legend? watched two. How mm -hmm. did she take to that? Oh well, well, actually, she she liked them. She liked them fine. Not nothing too extravagant, but and she's not ready better, out to it, get a it was tattoo. A, no, it was a better reaction than than I had expected. Hmm. So that went well. But that was last weekend. This weekend, uh, what was fun was. My daughter had asked me to pick out a movie for her to watch on on Saturday because we, we were just hanging out. And she's right now she's really into anime for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Because it's uh, awesome. Oh, I get well, I mean, I'm not gonna say no to that, but yeah. And and so I I said, you know what? Let's try something different today for you. I was like, you you're really into anime right now. You're 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 a preteen, you're a little bit older. I was like, I, I think I think I got a movie for you. And so I went over to HBO Max mm -hmm. under um, Studio Ghibli. Mm -hmm. And I played Ghibli. for her oh, yeah. Spirited Away. Awesome. Great movie. How'd she like that? Uh, oh, dude, she, she loved it. And Very cool. I did not expect for her to love it as much as she did. It's a it's like a. That is, I, G Ghibli's always done, you know, done these fantastical movies, sure, but the the stories that are being told are very mature, very la layered, and right, yeah. So that's that's yeah. awesome. Pre I, I thought age, so, yeah. That's awesome. I, I thought she'd really get bored, mm -hmm. or, or you know, that it just wasn't her thing. But she was so captivated by the the, the fantastical characters, and and you know just. It's just not normal beings and stuff and whatever, and everything was so different that that she enjoyed every bit of those two hours of the film. So that was very nice. And then she moved right into the next day to my neighbor uh, Totoro, and we're gonna keep going from there. And, and that's uh, it's really cool that we get to do that. Yeah, um, it is. Those those films, man. That was a work of art, right there, man. Uh if if she is into into um the actual craft of miyazaki uh 
uh, the you know guy everyone relates to with movies from Studio Ghibli, uh, even though he didn't direct or or uh, all all of them. Um, but anyway, ways there's a uh, Miyazaki documentary on HBO Max. Oh, nice! I need to yes. watch this. Um, let me actually, I uh, I'll look look it up right now. The title, I think, Never Ending Man. That's what it is. The ne- Never Ending Man. Uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, it's on HBO Max. I haven't seen it. I just saw the, this weekend that it was on on there, and um, I plan on on watching it the, this week myself. Um, it's funny because we were just talking about um how people constantly compare uh Shinkai who who did uh Your Name and Weathering with You and uh Hosoda who did um. Boy and the Beast, uh, Mirai, which got not nominated for Academy Award and and uh, is doing the upcoming Bell. People are always like, "Oh, they're both the next Miyazaki," and it's like, "Well, no, you can definitely tell they're influenced by." And uh, Hosoda was actually t- tapped to direct Howl's M- Moving Castle, I believe, but uh, dropped out of it uh, before it went into uh, uh, main production. And um, but. Their their uh, films also uh, l- layer on different l- levels of uh, accessibility, and we talked about uh, Summer Wars this this past weekend on uh, Anime Versal Reviews, and that's from Hosoda. He's got Beth Bell coming out uh, later this year, and um, accessibility with anime is important. Uh, it's so easy to throw off a Westerner. That's not into the <laughs> culture no i mean look it's it's odd odd even as someone that loves it i can uh, i'm 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 sorry there's there's weird shit there i still love it but doesn't take from it that not everyone can get into we- weird shit and uh those types of films the ghibli films uh hosoda and and shinkai that that accessibility man have you seen your name or weathering with you yet no okay um, I'm going to, I'm going to consult with my, my peers in, in the elite class <laughs> of a- anime fans. And, uh, we're going to, we're going to confer on a, a good, uh, Hosoda or Miyazaki. I think Summer Wars actually might be, be right up your, your alley. Take, take the I- idea of family, right? Big family, like old family, right? So you've got deep, deep roots. You've got history in, in the area. And then of course, with a, with a uh, big family, there's always drama, right? Always. Mm-hmm. And take that and on top of it and right below it, put Ready Player One, where an online world exists, where, where everything's connected and something bad ha- happens to it and they got to they gotta fix it while dealing with all this, this like family, regular f- family drama stuff, like adopted in- illegitimate children, you know, from, from a, a grandfather's time back in the, the 50s and uh, uh, extended families not not uh, being around and, and you know, marriages and, and things like Just this b- beautiful family movie, dude. And it's it's from the guy that d- did the Digimon movie, <laughs> you know, Soda. It's, it's, it's awesome is what I'm saying. Anyways, uh... You want to talk about something dumb? Sure. It's going to be spicy, ladies and gentlemen. If the wor- <laughs> word slave in and of itself is uh, sensitive for you, then you might not want to listen to this discussion because we're going to have to say that that word several times. Uh, it came out over Twitter and was reported on several sites that uh, someone somewhere between toys, Lego, and Disney proper – uh, the conversation of changing Boba Fett's ship's name, at least on boxes and visible mer- merchandise, from uh, Slave One to Boba Fett's starship or Boba Fett's spa- spaceship, which has been on boxes before below the Slave Slave One title. Now, in the old EU, uh, he was a bounty hunter. He would go capture people that generally did end up enslaved or in carbon night in later days. Uh, but they're retconning Fett for the EU, right? They're trying to make him, I guess, a uh, uh, family-friendly anti-hero? I, 
I'm so p pissed at this because just last week you and I were talking about someone that was just screaming up and down about how political Star Wars is and has to be be and slavery's still something that exists today and uh it's funny that people don't don't think it it does but it it does and and beyond uh sweatshops and sex trafficking like legitimate hard labor camp slavery still exists in in 2021 on on earth and now we get this idea that oh the the word is what traumatizing tr triggering uh un i don't i don't know what else do you, do you call it? this is the same thing dude that happened when they were like we don't want to use master chip and slave chip or master drive and slave drive in technology anymore like what when when you jump a vehicle off you know what that's actually calling it you get the slave cables to do do it that i mean the the term is not synonymous with just one application you know what i'm saying so what's going on man man you live out in holly weird area i know you're in the valley but you, you go and visit enough what's going on out there dude dude <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on man it it's a it's a travesty really uh is it is it a giant big deal no, but at the same time, it is because you think of them doing that, and it's like, okay, you did that. Now, what are you going to do next? Because it doesn't, because you don't just stop there, you keep going. And what you end up doing is you end up really uh, almost transforming the franchise, changing characters, and um, pissing off the fan base that was there before you even owned it. Yeah. <laughs> because you and I have also talked about the fact that they, they're they hiring people who, have, who are not fans or uh, are, or are familiar with Star Wars. Yeah, they might be ca casual noobs. <laughs> so, so doing something like this to them they don't really give a shit because it doesn't mean anything to them mm -hmm. and and then my bigger problem i think is if you start if you start censoring words like that then then how do you how do you learn about things like that because schools also censoring certain topics sometimes in some areas where you're not allowed to learn certain things anymore <laughs> and and so people people grow up real ignorant and it yeah. makes it very, very easy to either sway to the left or to the right mm -hmm. without knowing history. But I'm not, and I'm not saying I'm not saying Star Wars is history, but right. some of the concepts is the only place you're going to get to see them because in an accessible way, yeah, right. Uh, because you here, you know, it's it's not. I I, I it's just mind boggling how how sensitive things are and and to, to the point where a ship's name from a bounty hunter mm -hmm. whose whose job is is actually more terrible than the, the ship's name itself <laughs> is a problem <laughs> like and, I, and oh. but but you want to but you but you want to make so much money off of it mm -hmm. though yeah and that's that's the key key thing here is Disney Disney came out, you know, we could talk about Gina Carano's firing all, all day long, but one of the biggest things that most people had an issue with was just the, the hypo hypocrisy of it, where it's like, look, you guys have other people that have been in your, your movies, written, directed, em employment that have said similar things whether it was about people on the right or people on on the left or about trump or about uh obama or biden you've got people that say stupid sh shit in hyper hyperbole all the time you got people that do it on purpose exaggerators uh that are tr trying to make points provocateur whores and then you got dumb asses that don't know, know any better but um you're you're supposed to be uh equal opportunity opportunity with with this type of thing right you're supposed to be equally applying your your standards and that's what most people had an issue with and that's kind of what's happening here we have on the one hand uh loki director or showrunners sorry 
uh, I think it was the sh showrunner, um, talking about, you know, hey, I, I got it in canon that Loki's bisexual. Okay? And? Like, like got it. Okay? Politics. Uh, you didn't see that. Commentary. One, got it. Tracking. I don't fucking ca care. That, that shit's already been explored in the comics. Long ago, right. you, you know, and yeah. and again, I I watch anime, and, and whether you, whether or not it's common in uh, Japanese col culture or not, uh, LGBT uh, themes and characters are very common in anime going back decades. So it's what whatever on that. But at the same time, now you're you're saying we can't have this other conversation, uh, which is being discussed about. In schools, like you said, uh, critical race theory is a is a, a big proponent about making sure slavery is discussed at at length and in in depth with a, additional points of view uh, that aren't common in many curricula across curricula is that the word right curriculum across the uh, across the the U.S. But that's that's two that's two topics that you guys are are tr treating completely differently now, and I will always point out because i i had someone you know talking about uh di difference in in times and and things like that and i'm like okay so what happens when this is looked back as bad you know what i'm saying right you and i always bring up people are never wo woke enough for 10 10 years from now and i mean like you said it's not even that that big of a deal like if they had quietly done done this like if they had just maybe put Boba Fett's starship and then Slave One in smaller print, I don't think it would have caught on to the mainstream news as as fast. And then uh -huh. maybe shrink the Slave One print over a f few years. I really don't think people would would complain about that subtle change in in font. Uh, but as soon as you drop it, p people would notice, and and that would become, you know, a, an issue. I just. They're wanting to make Boba Fett a good good guy. Let's talk talk about that a aspect of it. Okay, changing characters and and stuff happens all all the time in in comics, retcons, alternate versions, what what have you, reboots. What do you think about the idea of taking Fett and making him more complicated? It's like all that? about money, man. They just want to squeeze whatever Sell they can out of it to kids. Kid. And let's be honest, Lucasfilm kind of dropped the ball with Boba Fett in the beginning. Yes, Lucas and, and sucked with it. They did not realize what, what they had there and mm -hmm. uh, even dropped the ball with the toys. So, uh, um, it, hey, it look, 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 let nature take its course, okay? If a kid swallows a fucking missile. No, I'm joking. That's <laughs> terrible. Continue. Um, <laughs> and, and so, and so now, but I mean, like War of the Bounty Hunters has been really good, so in that aspect, it's fine. But you, you can't. It it you have to make sure you leave it Star Wars. Don't Disneyfy it, Be, because because you're you're what overall. Unfortunately, my overall feeling about it is that since Disney is taking o taken over. They have watered down. Um, I was going to say Starbucks for whatever reason. <laughs> Star uh, I need a lot more coffee in me. Help me, oh. please. Um, they've watered down Star Wars, man. It does not have that shine, that luster that I used to love so much of it. And while I appreciate having more content, uh, too much content is also not not good. And so for with Boba Fett, it just seems like He's the next one in line of characters to exploit. That's the way I'm going to put it. They did it with Han Solo. And um, they're still. There's it seems like with Luke Skywalker and the Luke and the Skywalker saga, they've already squeezed the orange as much as they can. And now they're like tearing apart the skin and just trying to get as much water out of it as i don't know out of the ot as they possibly know you're you're yeah you're and, right and so uh while casual fans are all like oh yeah it's more star wars or whatever you, you know there's there's people who have been 
who loves love Star Wars for so long that can look at all this stuff and 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 really be honest with themselves to how how crappy it's been. Because even even like in and and the way I knew <clears throat> was look at look at the non excitement for Bad Batch. <laughs> We thought that yeah. we thought that should have been a little bit bigger. No, it did it didn't do it didn't do as well. I was surprised that I wasn't as as invested as it was. And then I don't I don't even know if the Mandalorian is as good as as it is in in most cases because we didn't really have anything else at the time to in general. To, yeah. So you know it's it sucks. It really sucks for Star Wars because now what what the the key for star wars is what uh cruises galactic cruises uh, uh lightsabers coca colas that are shaped round a uh, build your own droids uh, galaxy's edge what is all that in the words of mr krabs oh. money you know one of the I- interesting points you you bring up like the idea of exploiting the the character and i i brought up you know, trying to make Boba Fett more kid friendly. You know, more family friendly. How is his story in in the Bounty Hunter Wars? Or is he the the hero trying to you know protect his quarry while others are trying to steal shit from from him? Or is it more complicated? Um, they made it a little bit more complicated from the from the issue from the first issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, added a little flavor as far as his relationship with Jabba. And it does connect with kind of what happens at the end of season two of The Mandalorian, which was actually very well done. Mm-hmm. But it w- it didn't give you enough information to... Not, not, it, it made you want to fi- figure out then how did he get where he was in Return of the Jedi. But he is, he is 100% not a villain. Uh, he's yeah, definitely more of an anti-hero, and and that's a problem. That's that's a problem, man. right? Because because that he's he's supposed to be a lot more of a badass, I think. Mm-hmm. And well, now you, no, go ahead, sir. No, no, you're fine. I was gonna say, I brought this up before in the can in the cantina, our, our Star Wars podcast, which you guys can find on the. Uh, genreverse podcast network and our LRM YouTube channel uh, um, t- talking about how the empire in the EU was sexist and ra- racist you know they were pro male human in the in the imperial m- military as the pinnacle of e- evolution um, females did attain some high positions that you know uh, when they were you know above and, and beyond you think of Dala you th- think of I I surge you think of Ma- Mara Jade um, and then, uh, you have, uh, like Thrawn, you know, that, that alien that made it in, into the empire. And that yeah. was always like a key th- thing. Uh, like you said, that's historical, uh, uh, issues and things that in many places still suffer to today. But, um, those types of things explored in S- Star Wars droid slavery is something Lucas himself said he wanted to see ex- explored and was explored a bit in the EU but he had planned on actually speaking on but it, he hadn't gotten to that part yet uh those are from George Lucas's uh words and um i i who's supposed to be the b- bad guy now because honestly Disney Lucasfilm and new newer fans it honestly seems like you don't want a bad guy in Star Wars. You want the bad guys to be things out he- here in the real world. Do, do you get that feeling? Yeah, and it's and then it's not um, because it's not Darth Vader, <laughs> and it's not Darth Maul, definitely. No, nope. um, sympathize with the, them. Sympathize with the, the other guy uh, and. And and I I don't know it just almost seems like Disney's the villain for Star Wars. That's that's all we have left. <laughs> well, that's what and, I'm saying is like, uh, o- older fans are like, what the fuck Disney? F- f- fuck you, you guys guys trying to k- kick us out, or n- newer f- fans or newer writers, directors, whatever, trying to k- kick us out, trying to trying to uh uh g- gatekeep after you know the overwhelming majority of us let you in, no no questions asked. Um, 
You know, I stopped a asking you to name, you know, droids besides R R2 and C3PO when I was like 12. 12. Okay, 13. Because <laughs> like, the thing is, I if you weren't reading if you weren't reading Star Wars material back when it was at mm -hmm. Dark Horse and and before or or pre Disney Marvel, then well, what were you doing? Yeah. Well, and the no I, novels. Yeah, right. But yeah. Um, but it's just, dude, they they take they take it and then and then all these casuals come over and it's like I'm a Star Wars fan. Like, no, you 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 like that it's at Disneyland. That's that's really what it is. And there's nothing. There no, there there, is, there isn't nothing, wrong. There's yeah, nothing wrong there, with that. There would but. be nothing wrong with it if you guys allowed us to maintain liking the star wars that we like that, well, the, the thing the thing is it's uh, uh, well okay that's exactly what i was going to say <laughs> it's okay to it's okay to just be a casual fan about it yeah but but don't start don't start begging for these changes that all of a sudden change star wars it's like no 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 this is what it is it's not yeah. that and, and then, we can always use new and fresh ideas we need a new science fiction world. Avatar's not it. Sorry, guys. Fuck James Cameron's bull bullshit. Uh, Fern Gully meets. Uh, uh, you mean cowboys versus Indians? Uh, in space. Uh, like really I like is. I said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. What's wrong with coming up with new I ideas? Yeah. That, so it'd be another thing. Also, is if it if they were. They actually, God forbid, wrapped up the the Skywalker saga and actually did something new. Yeah. And and then, but at that point, yeah, this is your this is the next gen. This is now the next generation Star Wars. But as long as you continue with the start with the Luke Skywalker saga, mm -hmm. don't touch it or like don't yeah. stop 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 trying to you know change something that that's already been established for decades. Yeah. I, I I can agree with with that. I think, like like you you said, will the Mandalorian hold up? I don't I don't know. I've seen the for the uh, podcast pur purposes. Uh, most of season two I watched uh, twice. I would watch it uh, immediately, and then I would uh, watch it um, to take notes for the for the show. But mm -hmm. I always I. I learned that during 2019 going into 2020 that doing so many podcasts for, for the, for the site and stuff, um, I started to lose some of my enjoyment. So I started trying to watch every, everything twice, but, um, you still don't have that, that com comparison. And I, I want to go back and actually try to watch season one and, and then watch season two again, um, and see, what hold, holds up and how how well and uh i'm 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 starting to really get upset like i was excited and happy with a lot of the boba fett's stuff but all these these things that like you said keep us back in the ot slash pt era you know the time we'll we'll say from episodes three three to six you know keeping us mm. in that time time frame uh so much is burning me the fuck at like if mandalorian yeah. brought in ah ahsoka and e ezra and went the thrawn routes still but never brought in uh boba fett i i almost think that would have been better and no offense to 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 tamir morrison has been um amazing i actually like what they did but it's this other stuff that comes next like you said you just remind reminded me of it Literally, we're going to yeah. be anchored back to an to an OT character again. Like and that, and that's the mm. thing, is that by the time you do that, you're burning people out, and I think that's where they got. That's where they're at now with with Clone Wars, and and with Bad Batch. It's like are we we still doing this, huh? Okay, uh, all yeah. right. That's that's uh, yay. We're Dave <laughs> alone. Like, but you're not. But you're not going to disrespect the man and and like not no, watch no. it or whatever. But uh, it's like, but you, you kind of get tired of it. It's like, it's like having your favorite meal every day. Yeah. By Monday, by, by the Monday of the following week, you're you like, I hate else. this so much. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. Wrap, just wrap it up, B, you know, just 
pick. <laughs> I, I've I've said this since two two thousand like fifteen. Say like since episode seven came out. I'm like, okay, when you're done with this trilogy, pick uh future or past and go one thousand years. Either mm -hmm. either direction. I don't care. Pick one. Just get the fuck away from when Yoda's alive and when Luke is alive. Get away yeah. from those two points and 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 we're we're good. So uh anyways, let's hear from our sponsors for the first time this week, guys, over at Grow Grow Generation. Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. Grow Generation offers the best deals and discounts on the best grow products on the market. Grow Generation serves customers across the nation and carries a wide inventory of renowned cultivation brands. Go to www.growgeneration.com, where the pros go to grow. Yeah, do, do what that guy said who speaks so clearly, thanks to the Fuck wonders of editing. Yeah, doing? I hate that guy. I don't know. He's some dipshit shit. Um... Dude, self-deprecation, like, what? That is, like, a lost art. art. People are so fucking vain. They can't even poke fun at themselves these days. Holy he, shit. He was doing it for a minute, and then I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened I, either. Hmm. <laughs> I love the Teen Titans go, though. Everyone um, everyone that hates on, on them, I will say this. I, I get it, because I, too, liked the original Teen Titans. But you guys have to accept Teen Titans Go f for what it is. And if you like r riffing on DC, that is the that is the source for like the best <laughs> jokes on on DC. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, also remember that Teen Titans Go, if if you're our are around our age in the 30s or whatever, it's not for you. Yeah, for your kids. Yeah, <laughs> and so you—they're not making cartoons for you. Cartoon Network says, "Fuck you, Kyle. You've already had your time. Now yeah. it's time for your kids." So, um, I got complain about it all anime. you want, but my daughter loved Teen Titans Go, and then I just happened mm -hmm. to enjoy it for what it was. Yep, exactly. And then I have my series that I can go back and watch. I have a couple of them actually. So just. When people always complain about cartoons and saying, man, they're not like they used to be. It's like they're not because the kids right now are growing up with a lot different attention spans yes. and and different circumstances that a, a show like Teen Titans, a show like Batman, the animated series will not hold up to the mm -mm. kids today. Not like it did, did before. Nope. They need to be a lot more flashier, quicker. Just look at the Ninja Turtles and some of the later yeah. things that they've done. They look... They look kind of weird and everything, but I hated the but last it, artwork. It, it, but it, it's it's what's going to captivate kids, and it's to make money. I mean, look, yeah. I do love that we can get uh, some modern uh, uh, show create creators and and writers, runners. Uh, uh, we'll say show creative te teams like behind the amazing world of Gumball. That mm -hmm. show is one of the greatest cartoons of ever i i'm i'm serious when you look at at the fact of uh how bland and uh vanilla uh american an animation has become everything looks like B bob's burgers or a uh, family guy everything i love bob's burgers, I, love bob's burgers. <laughs> I i i have uh 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 it on on my pl playlist from uh hulu i think i think it is i i watch it all the all the time like it's one of those comfort shows that i can put on in the background and just just have there you, you know and uh um it still man gumball managed to bring in art styles from from cgi to, to 2d cell a animation to anime may style it is a lo love letter to, to an animation, and it is <laughs> it is the the modern uh, uh, Rocco's modern life. Uh, people might not remember Rocco very very uh, fondly after the static uh, static reboot or static shock or static charge or whatever the fuck it was called garbage bullshit thing that that waste of time that 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 was. Um, but it was it came after Ren and Stimpy. And it was grown up, but it was still more kid friendly with the flashiness and and stuff. Unlike Ren and Stimpy, that was very dra drab and was obviously for teenagers and, and adults. Uh, Rocco do does that. Was so or uh, Gumball does that. 
so many like grown up refer re references and shit like that. Uh, like you find out Nicole and and Richard get married after he knocks her up. Like there's a scene where they go to the doctor, they're all happy, and then they get concerned, and then there's a wedding scene. It's like, yeah, that's that's real life. Like I had no <laughs> no issues with that. It was just like sh shocking to to see it done like that in the in this c cartoon with no commentary or context because that's. That was aimed at us, and all the kids sees is Richard and 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 Nicole having gumball, and then having uh uh Anais, and then have you know getting uh Darwin and stuff. It's it's a brilliant fucking sh show, man. And yes, I do do love Bob's Burgers, but aren't you getting tired of seeing Bob's face everywhere? Like th that housebroken show, the fucking dogs look like Bob's b Burgers. They oh look, yeah, and like, then the Central Park and things like that. Yeah, like. <sighs> mm -hmm. That, yeah, I, I get that part of it. That's, yeah, I just was some uh, diversity in the anim specific, animation. Spe yeah, specifically uh, Bob's Burgers, I just thought was fantastic. Mm. Uh, but... And the cookbook and the burger names, so brilliant. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the chalkboard was always one of the best. Mm -hmm. I remember <laughs> the first time I ever saw Bob's Burgers, it was uh, Bob and Linda had to go somewhere. They left uh, Luis in charge, and she had the pedophile special <laughs> that... Um, that came with free candy. I don't remember seeing that, <laughs> that one. Damn. Dude, I was like, what is That's this hilarious. Show? And then Bob comes back and she's like, get it. Get it. Yeah. It with candy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, if this show's willing to go there and make it really funny, uh, I'm I'm good. We, we're going to we're going to watch every every episode. So, yes, it, it was good. Um, let's talk a little bit about the return of people returning to theaters <laughs> okay okay let's, uh, do, let's do that fast nine had the highest opening weekend of the pandemic technically we're well we're still in it i guess because california is still in a state of emergency because our governor's an idiot mm -hmm. um 70 million box office hall this weekend, this yeah. weekend domestically not too um, shabby uh not a hundred i thought this would I, I did so closer. yeah you know you know what i i thought that's what it was gonna do and so I, i'm gonna still take it as a win yeah but also i saw that somebody pointed out that it may just not it may actually be the fact that there are some people who looked at this movie and went eh yeah that's true really like uh, we're uh, we're doing this again a and so uh just because of like the the track that a quiet place two has had mm -hmm. uh it, it that one's done a lot really really well, surprisingly well for when it came out and um if you if you look at if you look at the numbers oh well nobody can see that i'm pointing at the screen i don't have a um which number do you want me to point <laughs> at i uh, know a uh, quiet place two just just how uh, well it's done yeah um worldwide 248 not for too being shabby. for being a horror thriller yeah, it, it, it's it's really really it's, it's done really really well. And a se sequel happy. at that. Yeah, yeah, a sequel. Uh, so just just the, uh, I I think there's also a little little fury, fast furious fatigue. Uh, but it, it's nice to see that on Friday when I was looking for some tickets for 40x, it was sold out across the weekend. <laughs> Wow. And uh it's usually that would that would annoy me or whatever, but in this case it may just made me happy. People are coming going out, going to the theater, buying popcorn, you know, get out there, spend your money, uh help the economy, and then also go to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh because in order for us to go to the to the theaters needs needs someone that 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 is capable of sitting for for more than than an hour and a half or being able to stand for for a while to to uh mm -hmm. to to work there <laughs> um right. i was trying to see uh what should i try let's try this one uh let's see what um sa saturday or no let's uh what's the um you're, you're looking at uh i'm looking oh, for okay. black black widow here and let's just say on oh that's the Thursday show. Let's go with the Friday seven ten and let's let's see what this is like. Uh, oh, there's your email. Wow. Well, <laughs> I can cut that out easily, but let me uh 
blur. <laughs> uh, here we here we go. And uh, let's just say to adults. I want to see what it what it's like in Vir Virginia Beach, just in my general vicinity. Okay. <laughs> That's not too too bad. Oh, a week week out. I, I I have no idea anything about this particular theater itself. Uh I know it's not the biggest one in Virginia Beach because it's a Regal, and I think theirs is an AMC. Um, yeah, and that's still a week out. So, and they're not really pushing like tickets are are on sale right now. You know what I'm I'm saying? Like, I've seen a a few uh YouTube video like ads. But not a lot of uh, like broadcasts, like when I watch my local newscast in the morning or, or at night, I'm not seeing a lot of Black Widow tickets on sale by them. I think it's going to do fairly well mm -hmm. just because of familiarity. Yeah. Um, people are going to be flocking to it because it's something that's safe, something they know is not going to be too ridiculous. And uh, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad movie at all. Mm -hmm. It's just for me, it, was just, it just feels a little too late. Even even um, pre pandemic, uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so if Fast Nine did what seventy, mm -hmm. and I'd get I give this one probably maybe like what one ten. I I really really when I when I originally took a guess late last year or early this year, I said eighty. 85 um seeing fast nine do 70 and like you said a lot of a lot of people really don't care about it you you have the whole thing with uh um what's his name uh oh, yeah. cena uh playing into i don't think that that's gonna I, at that point. i'll say i'll say the, this the the biggest fast and furious fans i i know of were were all military hua hua Mm. manly men that do you know punch bears and and stuff you know is it because they got ch uh chargers when they got out of the army I, yeah that's one one of them you, you <laughs> noticed that too you civilians noticed that shit dude we also you, noticed you guys you, get married fairly quick you you have no idea how bad that that uh the the charger and the camaros were uh camaro because of tra transformers but when we're deployed uh there's an auto uh, dealer through the uh, Army Air Force uh, Exchange Services, AFES, the a, uh, PX right. stuff, and it's tax free. Oh, okay. So, in addition to us earning money, putting our lives in on the line yeah. uh, at tax free rates, you can also buy a car over there, customized from dealers, you know, from the uh, 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 manufacturers, uh, and it'll be right. delivered either where you live in. Europe or the states, or it's so uh, a lot of soldiers stupidly at the low ranks go buy thirty, forty thousand dollar vehicles um, instead of you know getting a ten thousand dollar nice used vehicle that they pay cash for and don't have a car note, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and wait until they're you know enlisted uh, uh, pay grade of, of five or six before getting their first like n new car, but. Other, other, there are some young soldiers that are really, really good with their mon money. So, oh uh, yeah, that I know. <laughs> but yeah, that that's crazy. I didn't even know you noticed the 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 major inf influx. Well, you do have that one it, base out there, there not too far. So it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know Chevy for sure as fuck, fuck did with the Camaros. My God, and then everyone putting Bumblebee stickers on it, and uh, um, I guess they're lucky that movie came out, right? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> It's 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 a cool car. Just don't don't uh, don't get a yellow one because uh, statistically you're going to be pulled over more. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, is it just for Camaros or is that no the color yellow? Just the color yellow. Yeah, yellow cars, yellow, and I think it was red. They're they're a lot more noticeable on the road. Mm. So uh, I think AAA came out with a stat that said if you have the color if you, if you have those colored cars, be prepared to be pulled over more. <laughs> because you're the police officers are going to notice it more than like a silver or even a black, right? Um, because if if you think about it, if you have a bunch of of cars like a mm -hmm. like say a dark green, a gray, a black, and then there's a yellow car, that one's going to pop out a little bit more. That 
So that makes sense. So like, yeah, I I haven't. I was going to see Fast Nine, and then it was so hot over the weekend that I didn't want to go outside. So, yeah. and 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 that was and that told me something also that how much how much I was really like willing to give in to to go watch it. Like I've already seen Black Widow, but we are going to go see it in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, because it should be enjoyed in theaters. I think most movies should be enjoyed in theaters. That's just my opinion. Uh, but Fast 9, I'm like, all right, it, this is going to be the same thing as the previous movie and the previous movie and the previous movie, just with even more ridiculous stunts that are impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because I, I think one of the things I've always noticed about Fast and Furious is like there is no suspension that can take no. that kind of punishment of any of those movies no. <laughs> and um and most of those people would be hurt hurt bad because because uh you cannot take those kind of that kind of punishment anyway but i mean it's not that's not what it's for they're i fast and furious movies are like capri sun movies mm-hmm. they're just there for entertainment value they're not necessarily there to try and inspire you to to uh do anything other than speed and get a ticket very very true nah that's it's gonna it ends in the same way let me let me guess this movie this movie ended with dom handing uh john cena corona and saying family is forever or some bullshit like that it's um and then somebody had told me he's like hey you know they're bringing back uh brian and i and my first initial that was uh He's well. No, you know what? I wouldn't see it past them to somehow do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So I just looked up. This is my regular theater that I I usually do attend, and this is a Friday uh showing, um on the uh, uh I think it's the RPX uh premium screen, and mm-hmm. that's Friday's like seven forty show there. I mean, and people don't get their nothing. tickets a week in advance. Exactly. So, so it will be be it just. I just wanted to show a, a comparison for a um, like I said, I'm in the vicinity of of Virginia Beach, and and that right there is one of our, you know, one of the biggest theaters around, most popular by biggest. I mean, I mean, popular uh theaters around around. So we'll see. I I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my 85 number. What what say say you eighty five? All right, million I'll ugh, fine. I'll I'll, I'll um. Did you say eighty five? Yeah. All right, one dollar, Bob. Um, <laughs> if you don't get that reference, <laughs> and it's you, Drew, you, Drew now. Um, you you uh, yeah, it's still okay. I I like it fine still, but I'm never home during the day to to enjoy it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna all right, fine. If if you do that, I'm. <sighs> The person who who's most not, cause I don't I don't necessarily think this is even I think this is like middle tier Marvel, mm-hmm. but when it's coming out, I I will lower my number to one oh five. Okay, that's where I'll go. I'm 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 going to be super hopeful for it. I almost think that people didn't go to Fast Nine because they know Black Widow is coming out next week. That's and also, possible. also the thing you're not keeping in mind is that it's a holiday weekend. That too. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with 105. Okay. Yeah, we we can def- definitely see see what what happens with it. I'm hoping for for the best. I I, I I'm hoping for the best for all movies. Just to exactly. Be, I'm I'm yeah. not and and people who went to go see Fast Nine, awesome. People who want to go see whatever they want to go see, you know, Godzilla go go support, Kong. go support the 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 theaters, the the local theaters, the drive-in still. Don't forget about them because they held you. They they held, they held you, you down, uh, held down you for down. a minute. So don't don't forget about any of them. It it's it's a uh, um, Lion King reference, Circle of Life, where if you want continuous content, you want your the- better theaters, you want better entertainment value then you go to the theater and let them know that that's what you want by as kyle and i have said repeatedly spending your damn money Money. 
and we know y'all got stimuluses out there and you guys are spending on all kinds of dumb stuff. Why not go see a movie with uh, with your loved ones? So, I mean, for us here in this area, theaters are such 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 a thing that I think Fresno now has what one, two, three, four, five, five complexes. And that's if I really think about it, that's a lot. But they, they have a Maya theater, they have a United Artist and they have three Regal theaters. Uh, one of them that just opened with an uh, with their featured RPX screen, and then another one that features their their 180. Oh yeah, uh, the, the... Their, their, the 180 screen, IMAX, and 40x. So, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> all in one build, building. Yeah, dude, and, and they actually the IMAX used to be in a separate uh, building altogether, and they all they moved it all all together into into one building which was which is insane and it, lo- and it looks so fancy but i will say that uh the un- one of the unfortunate things about the pandemic is that they got rid of their box office and now it's just kiosks and you do it all yourself hmm. which i haven't actually gone to a box office in order to take it in a long time because i always use the app so yeah i'm i'm one of the those that uses the 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 a- app which is fu- funny because they don't offer any discount that I can take advantage of. Like I can at the box office, but mm. the like the extra four dollars I because when you think about the convenience fee that the app will, will charge, and then me not getting the the normal you know military di- discount. Um, I that's it, what does that say about me that I'm willing to pay four dollars more a ticket, almost buy a, a fourth ticket, basically, right? Four dollars <laughs> per per person, almost, uh, uh, to not have to stand in in line, show my ID, and <laughs> what does that say? You no, know, oh, it just it just it just says that you can afford to go to the theater, <laughs> and you don't you don't want you don't mind paying extra to not stand in the line. That's fine. Let me let me ask you something because it's it's a it's something that I felt has really changed things. Uh, I think it was in 2019, maybe late 18, is when our theaters here started doing assigned seating. Yeah, we do, and that has been the absolute best thing. That yes, happened. yes, amen, amen. That alone, your that alone is worth using the app yes. for the four four mm-hmm. tickets because I'm one of those people that. Uh, I like my my seats, uh, like in my mm-hmm. RPX screen. Those oh, are yeah. we have our seats. Like it's it's L thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. I will I'm accept buy, fourteen, like, fifteen, them, sixteen. Right, but I but thirteen to sixteen. Somewhere in, we gotta fit two or three of us. The all three of us are just me and Christine, depending. And uh, um, to be able to always get those seats, not have to like. I can leisurely walk in and and go to the concession stand and not yeah. worry about getting mm-hmm. a good seat, you know. I love so yeah. I do love. I felt it was odd at first, but I love it now. Yeah, well, because the thing is, we we always go to to premieres to films mm. um, as a group, and the way we have to do it is everybody has to get or, or a couple of us have to get out of work early to make sure that we were at the complex on Thursday. At a, at a very, very reasonable time or unreasonable time because we knew how big the movie was going to be. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to make sure that A, we all sat together and B, that we sat in a good place together. Mm-hmm. And then it was a fight because you, you put the sweaters down and everything. Oh, yeah. People move like, nope, your shit. Nope. Uh-uh. This is, these are our seats. Yep. And and people will get mad. And it's like, dude, like, we got here first. Fuck off. Like, yep. this isn't, this isn't a, a, a negotiation. Go find seats somewhere else. So, um, and, but now it's, uh, Hey, here are all the tickets. Uh, we're good. This, these are our seats. Boom. Done. Yeah. No, you're, you're a- a- absolutely right. That part alone is, is worth paying for, uh, an extra ticket. Almost. Do you, do you fall for the, do you fall for the upgrade schemes? No, no. Uh, so like I've, I've done two premium the theater ex- experiences where you could get like the uh drinks and the f- food and and stuff like that um uh upgrade to the reclining seats versus the regular s- i yeah no no i actually don't like the reclining seats are fine and i i do see a day potentially if if theaters don't 
pick up enough where more theaters will convert to premium ex- experiences, which can be both good, good and bad. But mm-hmm. I'm happy as a p- pig and shit, dude, in a fucking regular theater bucket seat with just a little bit of recline and w- watching a big screen. Like, as long as it looks, the screen looks good and the sound sound is good, I, I'm usually generally, well, when I was healthy, happy, mm-hmm. uh, but, but g- generally okay with a standard seat. And a standard ex- experience. I don't even need the alcohol. Like... No, well, because the, th- the thing is, <laughs> like, if you get a small, that's actually really huge. And then mm. they're like, hey, for a dollar more, upgrade. It's like, no, you made these things expensive. Those enough. are what you were yeah. talking about, concession upgrades. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, that, and I know it, the bigger the, the drink that I get, the more I will drink. I'm like a, a reptile or amphibian. Like, I'll grow my, enclo- <laughs> clo- I'll drink to my enclosure. Um, and I don't, I don't need that. I, I like how ter- terrible was it for in game to literally be like dehydrating yourself for four to six hours before the fucking movie and not getting a big, uh, sh- sugary drink or water to go with a nice salt, salty treat for the movie of a lifetime. Like, you, you know, like, like fucking, I didn't have to worry about that. fucking <laughs> in game game. And I had to be like, I can't drink at, at all today because I refuse to, to get up <laughs> during this mo- movie. I'm not missing a, a second. I'm not a frame. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was... Uh, I, I think today that's probably the the mo- the most electric experience of it I've, yeah. I've been a part of. It, the, the end game. And I was in oh, the proud. theater for preview night for both episode one and episode seven. And end game above and beyond both experiences from start to fucking finish yeah the yeah it was i i think the 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 second most uh it wasn't and so it was the opposite of electric the end of infinity war i've never seen a crowd including myself so quiet yes and stunned i've never i've never left the theater where nobody's talking (laughs) and and there was, and and the funny thing is that there was some, there was this, there was this one lady telling her husband, "Jesus, what what happened? Why 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 is everyone so really like?" She she was like looking around and, and did not understand that um the because <laughs> we were everyone was just sitting there like yeah uh, uh oh, and then and then and what made it even worse is that then the pager comes out with with mm-hmm. Captain Marvel. And everyone's and everyone's like, okay, great, Captain Marvel's coming, whatever. But <laughs> no, nobody cared. And then and then Endgame happened, and man, uh, I I don't know. Some part of me wishes that I could relive that moment. Oh when, yeah, when uh, Sam says to your left. Yep. And or then Cap the entire the hammer and well, oh, when that happened, that mm-hmm. that entire place shook, man. Mm-hmm. One of my, I, I turned, uh, I turned to, to my side. One of my buddies was straight up crying. I mean, but this was this was ten years in building, mm-hmm. and it's and it's uh and the reason we bring it up again is because it's it's only an experience you can get in the theater. Yes, with a big crowd. Yeah, with with, with strangers and friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, love it and family, of course. But anyways, let's no, wrap not this. Family. <laughs> Let's wrap, let's wrap wrap this shit up today, guys. This is our wonderful website, lrmonline.com. Look at all these awesome stories written by all sorts of awesome people and lots of amazing po- podcasts and interviews that you can find right here on our wonderful YouTube channel. Look at all that. Lots of famous people that this guy and other people talk to a lot and ignore us for some re- reason. No, I'm jo- joking. And all these awesome podcasts, uh, several of them are in video format, like our Marvel show, The da- Daily Cup of Genre genre and sometimes the, the uh uh anime and star wars shows can be videos but all that can also be found anywhere you, you get uh your your podcast from soundcloud spotify uh google apple we're there there look guys hours of stuff and look forward to the next battle world podcast coming up on the anniversary we're looking at the second or third of july for for the anniversary of the battle of gettysburg uh der- during the american civil war so uh cam and i and potentially a surprise guest will be discussing 
Gettysburg, uh, the mo movie from 1994 based on um, the book uh, The Killer Angels. So, yeah. Cam, I actually just finished watching it this, this week, uh, this weekend, uh, for the first Is that time. How you guys ever. are tricking Cam to learn American history? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's how, how we're doing. Uh, it. Poor Scottish guy. Yeah, no, nah, it's 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 really <laughs> cool. Uh, got got a chance to visit that ba battlefield in 2016 before my my health took a turn, and it, that was a, a blessing, a very very cool and uh, amazing place to to visit, see, and. Uh, I can't suggest it enough for for everyone to go get a piece of of history. Period, not just Amer American, but history, and uh, also see some some really be beautiful land in, in Pennsylvania. So yeah. Anyways, thanks guys so much for jo joining us today. Uh, there's social media information down at the bottom. I'm at that column alone on Twitter. He's he's at lrm underscore Emmanuel. For those of you listening, Manny, any uh, really cool uh, interviews coming up? Soon? Yeah, actually, this week I will have Everardo Gout. He is the director for The Forever Purge, which is out this weekend. Phenomenal film. Loved it. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I've got to talk to you guys about it. I think tomorrow. I think that's when I can talk about it. Maybe Wednesday. I'll double check again. But um, I even had to go back and watch the other films to see. It's like, did I really like this that much? Because I don't remember liking <laughs> the other ones as much. That's a but, good sign. Yes. Uh, so... I have that coming up. So very uh, fun stuff overall. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us today and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.